This film is a training aid for flight crews to understand and comply with the air crew pre-flight checks of the C-133A aircraft. The sequence shown here was established in order to make the filming systematic and will cover the exterior walk-around inspection, the top of the wing inspection, and the interior inspection. In reality, the complete pre-flight inspection requires much more time and is outlined in TO-1C-133A-1. The exterior check should be started at the crew entrance door, check hinges, and release mechanism. Making certain that the emergency release handle is safetyed in the proper position. Special attention should be given to all doors and hatches in pressurized aircraft because a blowout could cause a serious accident. Make sure all pressure drains and static ports are clear of obstruction. The main components of the air conditioning system are located in the front section of each pod. Inspect all ducts and flex couplings for possible leaks which might impair pressurization or air conditioning capabilities. Inside the wheel well, check the general condition and servicing of wheels, tires, brakes, and mechanical as well as hydraulic components of the landing gear. Check proper strut extension. Make sure wheel removal valves are safetyed in the normal position and lockout cylinders are properly serviced. In the aft compartments of the right pod, check radio equipment for security of mounting and condition. Check for leaks and condition of the water alcohol injection system. Make sure that all access doors are secure after completing check. Check for security of all inspection doors and engine cowlings. Look for fuel and oil leaks, keeping in mind that it's hard to detect these leaks because of the colorless quality of the fuel and oil used in the C-133. Check propellers for general condition and possible leaks. Check the condition of the vortex generators. Visually, check for condition of ailerons including flying tabs and trim tabs. Examine flaps and flap mechanism. Check empennage, the condition of de-icer boots, security of inspection doors, condition and position of control surfaces and tabs.
Make sure static eliminators are attached to all control surfaces. The left side of the aircraft is inspected in a similar way, except for the following check items. The cargo door emergency release handle. The GTU fire extinguisher bottles for correct pressure and the ox hydraulic pump for proper servicing of lubricant. Check GTU tailpipes and plenum chambers for cracks. Check servicing and general condition, especially for fuel and hydraulic leaks. Check GTU starter current limiters and all other electrical components. The battery is checked for leakage, evidence of boiling, and proper connection of electrical leads and vent lines. Check the side cargo door emergency release handle for proper position. The oxygen filler and door must be secure. Check radom for general condition. Inside the nose wheel well, check the nose wheel strut for proper extension. Make sure static ground wire touches the ground. Check condition of nose wheel, tires, and steering mechanism. The nose access door is the last check item in the walk around inspection. All necessary safety precautions should be observed by the crew member making the top of wing inspection. Visually, check life raft release handles for being in and safetyed. Check life raft compartment doors and handles for being in the closed position. Check installation of release cables. and alignment of dura latches through plexiglass covers. In order to ascertain the correct amount of fuel on board and to obtain a check on fuel gauge accuracy, the fuel gauge reading is cross-checked with an accurate visual check of the fuel quantity using a dipstick and the fuel density reading obtained by a hydrometer. After completing this check, be sure fuel and dipstick caps are secure. Check general condition of wing, including flaps, ailerons, and vortex generators. Check inspection doors and covers for security. Inside the nacelles, check position of firewall shutoff valves. With the fuel system pressurized, check for leaks. Check 
fire extinguisher bottles for servicing and proper connection of leads. Inside the crawlway, check the icing valves, pneumatic ducts, and for evidence of fuel leaks. Special emphasis must be put on securing all hatches and doors on top of the wing, since opening in flight could result in severe buffeting and control difficulties. Make sure the two center wing access hatches are bolted shut. Before leaving the top side of the wing, see that the external cover of the escape hatch handle is closed and latched. The interior inspection of the cargo compartment also starts at the crew entrance door. All interior lights are checked, including emergency impact lights. Inside the latrine compartment, check nose gear release handle in and safety. Be sure there is sufficient reserve hydraulic fluid aboard. Check all emergency equipment, such as fire extinguishers and oxygen walk-around bottles. Under the flight deck, check all equipment for condition and security. Static lines are drained and drain cocks are checked closed. All cables and controls are carefully examined. Make sure the nose access door is latched. After completing the inspection under flight deck, continue the inspection of the cargo compartment. Examine the oxygen system for leakage. Check sump jar to see that it has been emptied. No loose equipment or combustible material should be near the oxygen system. Tie-down equipment must be properly stowed in the tie-down equipment boxes. Check side cargo door for being closed and secured with safety pins properly installed. Examine the emergency air bottle for service. Continuing toward the rear of aircraft, check pneumatic ducts for security of mounting and condition. The gear release handles must be in and safetyed. Examine all circuit breakers fuses, and current limiters. Electrical components must be securely installed. Use caution when working around high voltage areas. All protective bars must be secure. A loose bar could cause a short by falling against electrical connections.
check hydraulic reservoir for fluid level. Look for leaks. Make sure the reservoir pressure shutoff valve is safety in open position. And the drip pan drain valve is closed. Check the aileron accumulator preload. The radio circuit breakers must be in. On the rear ramp and door control panel, check handles for neutral position. Indicator lights A, 1, and three should be lit. Inspect emergency air bottle for proper service. Examine all radio equipment for security of mounting. Check all door latches and micro switches for position and condition. Examine rudder and elevator snubber systems, including reservoir for proper servicing. Check pressurization, outflow, and safety valves, including pneumatic and electric connections. Check all control cables, pulleys, and turnbuckles as far as visible. Inspect emergency depressurization door and actuating components. Check for leaking of hydraulic actuating cylinders and lines of cargo door and ramp. Items on the right side of the cargo compartment are inspected in the same manner as on the left. If the second engineer has completed the top of wing inspection at this time, you may use his assistance in checking the items located on top of the center wing area. These include the flap actuating mechanism and aileron centering and locking system. Inspect electrical motor and limit switch assembly. Flap torque tube drive, flap follow-up mechanism, and hydraulic components of flap and aileron mechanism for leakage. One ladder should always be positioned at the emergency exit on the side at which a life raft is installed. Be sure the ladder is properly secured. After the pre-flight has been completed, the checklist is reviewed to make sure that nothing has been overlooked. A conscientious pre-flight inspection is geared to cover areas where defects might be encountered or flight safety endangered. It is your best insurance policy for a safe flight. First of the giant C-133A turboprop cargo planes completed for the Air Force rolls out for functional tests. Two loading doors provide access to the 90-foot-long cabin floor, which is at truck bed height. Payload capacity is twice that of a C-124. For example, a sample load for the C-133 is two prime movers weighing more than 40 tons, 16 loaded Jeeps, plus 20 jet engines. Parked on a football field with its nose at the goal line, the C-133 would reach just two feet short of the 50-yard line. Wings would extend 10 feet over each sideline. 
The great airlift capacity of this 127-ton turboprop transport will add immeasurably to the Air Force's strategic mobility. The newest addition to Matt's cargo-carrying capability is the turboprop-powered C-133. This gargantuan transport can swallow a 100,000-pound payload and haul it a thousand miles. It can carry smaller loads up to 4,000 miles non-stop at speeds averaging better than 350 miles per hour. The C-133, with twice the cargo carrying capacity of the C-124, is capable of airlifting complete ICBM or IRBM missile systems and their support equipment. It can also carry nearly all missile age vehicles without disassembly. particular C-133 is getting ready for the aircraft's maiden transatlantic crossing from Dover Air Force Base. With 40,000 pounds of cargo aboard, the giant craft averaged nearly 370 miles per hour for the crossing to set a new mark in cargo mobility. Cargo Master, new official name for the C-133. A fully assembled four ballistic missile is about to go aboard. This is actually not a big load for the Cargo Master. It's designed to haul the giant Atlas fully assembled and will be able to handle the upcoming Titan intercontinental ballistic missile. The turboprop powered C-133 can carry twice the payload of any other military plane now in service. The soon to be produced C-133B, a more powerful version of the Cargo Master, will be able to haul over 50,000 pounds non-stop across the Atlantic at an average speed of 320 miles per hour. The Cargo Master makes possible intercontinental logistics for intercontinental missiles. Dover Air Force Base, a giant C-133 cargo master is about to take on the heaviest load in the history of aviation. Its cavernous cargo deck will be stacked with 117,000 pounds of high-density cargo. That breaks down to 59 tons, a mighty big airborne load. The C-133 is capable of airlifting complete missile systems anywhere in the world. A wing of 15 cargo masters can equal in delivery capability 37 and a half C-124s, 300 boxcars, 795 semi-trailers, or two and a half Liberty ships. Gross takeoff weight for the record big lift, more than a quarter of a million pounds. The big lift flight was made in observance of the 55th anniversary of powered flight. As the C-133 climbed to 10,000 feet, it smashed all existing records for heavy cargo lifts. 